Russia's withdrawal following Ukraine's counterattack has focused minds in both Moscow and Western capitals on what Vladimir Putin will do next to replenish his depleted army. Ukraine estimates more than 50,000 Russian soldiers died during the war, and while other tallies place it much lower, the Kremlin has been forced to find new ways to replenish its troops, including recruiting from prisons and homeless shelters. In the face of a Ukrainian backlash, pro-Kremlin bloggers and some television pundits had stepped up their calls for mobilizations that would force Russian citizens to fight. Putin has so far resisted full mobilization, which would present a number of challenges. Part of the problem is the Kremlin's description of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine as a special military operation that gives Russian troops the option of opting out at the end of their contract. Declaring mobilization is not only unpopular, especially in the largest cities Moscow and St. Petersburg. It would require declaring a military operation a war, which was an acknowledgement that an invasion would not be planned. Putin certainly has problems. This is one of those rare occasions where in terms of propaganda presentation they have cornered themselves, said Kier Giles, senior consulting fellow for Russia and Eurasia programs at London's Chatham House think tank. An admission of failure, which is something they haven't done yet, he told Newsweek. It doesn't matter how you package why it failed, it's still a setback, inexplicable, he said. They have to say for the first time we didn't win. That doesn't mean they can't do partial mobilization quietly. Giles said, referring to the Kremlin summoning reserves with a certain level of service obligation. Getting up from another service arm and being placed on the front line is not in line with their specialty. It's kind of a disguised mobilization, he added, that we can expect to continue. The Kremlin has repeatedly denied planning mobilization, although Newsweek reported in May how Russian government agencies recruited staff for wartime mobilization specialists. The U.S. think tank Institute for the Study of War, ISW, said on Thursday that Russia was responding to defeats around Kharkov Oblast by doubling down on crypto mobilization rather than setting conditions for general mobilization. He added, Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov asks all federal subjects to start self-mobilization and not to wait for the Kremlin to declare martial law. Kadyrov claims that every federal subject must prove his readiness to help Russia by recruiting at least 1,000 soldiers instead of delivering speeches and doing a pointless public event. The ISDU also said that Kremlin officials and state media, which had not previously carried out recruitment calls across the country, had assigned local officials and outlets to generate troops. Some of the previous methods of increasing troop numbers in Ukraine have included desperate measures. The homeless charity Nakleshka told Newsweek last month that staff from St. Petersburg's Frunzinski District Administration came to the shelter to persuade people to join the armed forces. Meanwhile, Britain's Ministry of Defense said Friday that a private Russian military company linked to the Kremlin. The Wagner Group has been trying to recruit Russian convicts for service since at least July. The British defense official added that Russian military academies were shortening training courses and advancing the graduation date of cadets, saying they might be deployed to support the war. According to the general staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Russia has even started recruiting sick and injured soldiers from hospitals to compensate for its losses. A Kyiv organization battling the Kremlin's covert mobilization efforts said Russia was likely to ramp up online recruitment in a desperate bid to get more troops to the front using classified advertising platforms. The Ukrainian War Victims Foundation says that since the start of the war, more than 50,000 Russians have been deployed to Ukraine after being recruited, in particular through headhunter.ru avido.ru and superjob.ru. It gets numbers analyzing vacancies, views, applications, and job offers.